Good Sunday morning. I'm Jaden Jefferson, and welcome to this week's Community Focus. Joining me right now is Eddie Campos, who is the president of Northwest Ohio Realtors. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So I really wanted to talk about our local real estate market and some other important things, but let's just first start there. In Northwest Ohio, for someone who's going to buy a house, what would you say to them? What advice would you have to offer? You know, when going to buy a home, first and foremost, I would strongly suggest that you get in touch with a lo licensed local realtor to be able to help you through the process. And and that's not because I, I'm trying to increase the amount of traffic that comes to me or any other of the 2100 agents in our area. But the process is challenging these days. You know, as you probably already know, there's limited inventory out there for people to choose from. So you have to be very strategic in the home you choose. And once you do choose a home, how you go about getting your offer accepted. Because if there's, you know, what we call a highest and best, right? That means there's multiple offers. There's more than one offer on the house. And if that's the case, the most likely, not always, but most likely, the seller is going to say, we want our highest and best. So now you as the buyer have the opportunity to change your offer. You can increase the price that would be highest and then you can improve your terms that's the best part and the highest price isn't always the winner that's where you have to be very strategic that's where your professional realtor comes in to be able to help you make those changes um, if you're a buyer that has limited funds to be able to utilize to do some of those changes choosing a home that's in perfect condition move-in ready it has the right neutral decor it has a new kitchen and all the updates those are the homes that are still leaving the market as quickly as they enter the market. Now, if you find a home like when I bought my first home and it needs a little bit of work, maybe it needs flooring, maybe it has the wallpaper with the flowers the size of my head that are on the walls, those kinds of things are somewhat easy to take care of. They're not as expensive maybe as replacing a roof that could be ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And you might be able to even get yourself a deal. So in the past 12 months, I've had several uh, clients who have had the opportunity to actually get a little bit of savings because we found a home that needed just a little bit of work, but it was still a great home. It had a solid foundation. You know, the updates were not necessarily brand new, but they're new enough that they weren't going to have to invest a lot of money into them. So when you're a realtor and you're consulting with a buyer, there's it, it's like a chess game. You know, you have to be very strategic at how you're going to move those pieces around to be able to be the successful bidder in that house. And the other perspective I look at this from is from the perspective of younger people that are going to buy their first home because it's already difficult to find your ideal home. But now throw in the fact that we have younger people that are struggling with this. Just kind of explain what their struggles are in that sense. You know, there's a couple struggles. So if you're a younger person, it's the first and foremost, this sounds very crude, but how much money do you have to work with? Right. What is your pre-approval amount? You know, so the first thing I always recommend for a buyer, especially a first time home buyer, is to have a consultation with the realtor to be able to, you know, kind of put all the parts on the lawn, so to speak, in regards to, you know, what the process is like and to really just zero in on what your buying power will get you. So if you have a pre approval, you've been approved by the bank to buy a home up to 200,000 and you happen to be looking for a home that's in move-in condition, looking at a home that's at 195 or 199,000 probably doesn't make the most sense because it's probably gonna end up going over $200,000. So what you may wanna consider is, you know, buying a home that's a little bit less than that so you have a little bit of maneuverability. The other thing that is being challenging for first-time home buyers, young buyers, is there's a lot more cash offers out there these days. You know, when I got in the business, that wasn't the case. And today it's not unusual that cash offers could be 35% of the market. And the reason that is, is they may have parents or grandparents that have invested wise, wisely, or, you know, they've retired and they have funds available, or maybe they take out an equity loan against their house and, and they help their children be more competitive in buying a home. So now this first time home buyer is a cash buyer on a $200,000 home. That's very powerful for them, and it's very attractive for a seller. That could be something that would be a, uh, a huge, uh, something that's going to work against them. 
And then the other thing is you have a lot of baby boomers out there that are looking to downsize, right? They've got a 2,000, 2,500 square foot home. It's just way too big for them now, which makes sense. So they're downsizing to maybe a 1,200 or 1,500 square foot ranch. That's an ideal home for them. And now all of a sudden they're competing with that first time home buyer. And most likely this person that's downsizing is also a cash buyer. Yeah, the last thing we need, the boomers fighting the millennials. We just, we just can't have this happening. This is a bit of a struggle, I think. <laughs> exactly. Why can't we just all get along? <laughs> I know. I mean, there's just a lot of fighting we have going on. But kind of speak to that. How did we even get into this situation where there aren't enough uh, homes? You know, how much time do we have on this interview? <laughs> um, there, there's a lot to unpack there, but I'll try to narrow it down as best I can. So when I got into the business in 2005, immediately following was the Great Recession. And when the Great Recession happened, several things happened, right? People lost their homes because job loss was at an all-time high. Uh, people had huge medical debt. And unfortunately, there were some lenders that went out there and used predatory lending practices that got people way in over their heads. They were you know, giving them a loan for 100% of the value of the house, plus they might give them an equity loan for the same amount. Well, that just really doesn't make any sense. Um, and there are several other things that happened, like builders could not afford to build a home anymore. So a builder knows exactly what their cost is on a home, right? They know how much the lumber, the drywall, the roofing was, and they know what that bottom line is. And when the appraisers were going out, what they were finding was is that the market was dropping so quickly. You know, if you built your home here, all of a sudden they couldn't appraise their home. So if it cost them $300,000 to build this house and the market is now dropping and now it's $220,000, that builder's in a heap of trouble. The developers are in a heap of trouble. And unfortunately, it, it forced a lot of builders into uh, a, a bad place during the recession. They had to file bankruptcy. They lost you know, homes or lost lots. And to no fault of theirs, the economy had just taken a terrible turn. So builders were not building right? Except for the exceptional uh, people that were out there that were in a position to be able to build a home. So instead of building, you know, 2000 homes a year in Northwest Ohio, we were building 50. So now all of a sudden that trend stays for a while. Now we're starting to come out of it. Well, we're way behind because for five, seven years, nobody was building and the population continued to increase. Now all of a sudden we're behind the eight ball. So if you look at things today, we're somewhere around 5 million homes behind. So that's gonna be a hard number for our country to be able to make up. And new construction doesn't necessarily do that because new construction costs are up. Uh, the cost of labor is up uh, and there's not enough labor out there. So fortunately places like the Home Builders Association here in Northwest Ohio are doing things like Build My Future to be able to show high school students and college students the possibility of getting a successful career in the trades as an electrician, a drywaller, somebody who's applying roofs, somebody who's going to become a builder. So those are ways to be able to help improve that situation. But again, that's going to be baby steps. And I was just going to say, you do see a lot of homes that are just coming up out in the suburbs, just right outside the city. And you're wondering, well, how are we still in a shortage? But yeah, I mean, that's the situation. It may be more homes, but it's not exactly solving the problem as you just mentioned, when we're 5 million homes behind. So that's a big well, struggle there. Yeah, and those homes are probably starting at a minimum of $450,000. The average sale price home in Northwest Ohio is just over $200,000. So who's going to be the buyer for that? Is it gonna be a first time home buyer? No, probably not even a second time home buyer. It just really depends on what's happened with their career and their financial situation. So that's something that unfortunately isn't going to be able to fill the majority of people that are looking to buy homes today. What do you think the future is going to look like then? Because I know you mentioned the program where we're going to be recruiting more people to build these homes, but do you think that we're going to be able to catch up? Yeah, but it's, it's going to take time. You know, it's baby steps. You know, our, our struggle is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So there's going to have to be several things that happen, you know, um, local, uh, you know, counties and cities are going to have to be a little more friendly on what they do to be able to help builders and developers get sub, uh, subdivisions put in and to build homes. Um, 
financing is going to need to be a little more creative. So on that note, there's one program in particular that is going to be very, very helpful for people to buy a home. And that's, that's this program here. It's called the Home Buyers Plus program that was put together in cooperation with the Ohio Realtors and the state of Ohio. So what it does is throughout the state, but specifically if we're talking about our market, uh, locally, uh, Superior Credit Union, I think Premier Bank are two of the lenders that are in this program. They have an enhanced savings account specifically to buy a home. So what that means is uh, if they're paying 4% on a savings account, the state of Ohio helps offset that and you might earn 7% on that savings account. So now you can earn money a little bit faster. All the buyer needs to have is $100 to open up the savings account. That can save up to $100,000 and it has to be used within five years. Uh, and the other benefit to that is on the gains, on the profit that you make on that, the state of Ohio is not going to tax you, which is also a savings. Programs like that are going to be very helpful for home buyers to be able to save for that next house. So maybe you're a first time home buyer, you already got into your home. I just closed on a property last week and they're already thinking, Listen, this two bedroom home isn't going to make isn't going to last very long because we want to have three children and we really want the children to have their own bedroom. So we really need to start thinking ahead and plan for that purchase in five years. Right. Programs like this are going to be able to help them do that. You know, and again, that's a marathon. Right. It doesn't happen next year. It happens over time. So that's going to be a big benefit. And the other thing that's going to happen is. As baby boomers age and they age out of their homes, that's going to provide more inventory to come into the market for people to have as well. But again, that's going to take some time. And people are living longer too, which means that some people may be staying in their homes a bit longer than in the past. So that's a whole nother thing. It's really just yeah. a cake of issues we have here. Right. And isn't everything like that? Everything is multi-layered as far as you know how things have to be solved. And in real estate especially, there is not an easy button. It's not like going to Amazon to order a pair of jeans or something for your kitchen. There's several things involved. When you order something off of Amazon, you don't need to have somebody inspect it. You don't have to get financing for it, although you may put it on a credit card. You don't have to have it appraised. You don't have somebody else involved, like you're not you know, bidding against somebody else for that same pair. You know, there's so many facets to buying a home it can be so complicated, can be so challenging. That's where the realtor comes in to be able to help you through that process. And then I'm sure you've worked with plenty of first time home buyers. What are they exactly looking for besides a low price when they're buying a home? First and foremost, and, and, and for good reason, somebody, everybody wants to have a home that's moving ready for the most part. And I kind of alluded to that in the beginning, you know, it has the new kitchen, the updated baths, the Vinyl plank flooring, it has it has it all, right? So all I got to do, get the truck, move my stuff, put it down, and I'm starting to live. And for good reason. If it's a dual family income, you have two people that are very busy. If you already have children, you may be in a situation where you've got kids that are in basketball and soccer, and those sports can be very active. So your lives have to be ready to go on day one when you're in that house. Everybody really wants that house for the most part. So that's what most people are looking for and that's ideal and unfortunately we're also in a society and i'm guilty of this as well where impatience comes in and it's like yeah i just want it done i want to be able to put my stuff down i just want to start living i don't want to have to wait another three years to be able to save up for that new kitchen i want my kitchen now so and and there's some ways to be able to do that right um but for the most part, that's what people are starting to look for is they want something that's going to be moving ready that their family can start enjoying from day one. But again, if you're somebody who can just take a step back, maybe buy something that isn't in that perfect condition, you may end up getting a deal. It may not take as long as you think it does to be able to improve it. And you're going to make it your own. I just hearing all of that, it sounds like things I'm going to be saying to my realtor in a few years. I, I already feel bad for whoever's going to sell me my first home because these are all things even I at this age, I'm like, yeah, I just want the house done, right? I mean, yeah. that's what you would expect. Yeah, that's probably the chief concern among buyers or the chief frustration, I should say, is that, you know, we go out and we try to get some of these homes and because somebody includes an appraisal gap right? Where if the house doesn't appraise, I'm going to throw more money at it, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, and be able to fill that appraisal gap. 
that's hard to compete with. That's people that just have money to be able to work with. So, you know, getting together with a local lender that understands the market right now is a chief concern. You know, so if they can get together with somebody where they can help them and say, listen, I know you want to put 20% down, but maybe we put 10% down and that way you have a little bit of cash left over in case you've got to get competitive to get that perfect home. So again, there are lots of things out there that we can do. There's lots of strategies, but consulting with professionals helps you do that. And what's the result? You end up with a home that, be able, that helps you generate generational wealth for you and your family. You know, if you think about somebody who bought a home in 2015 compared to today, their value may have doubled by now. So what does that mean by the time they retire? That's equity, right? It's like money. That house is money and you can borrow against that for what? To put Jaden through college, to pay for Jaden's wedding, to maybe help Jaden buy his first home. You know, there's lots of things there. You become your own bank. That's the importance of home ownership, and that's why it's the American dream. It's, it gives you the ability to have financial freedom. And who doesn't want money? <laughs> exactly. Who doesn't want money? Well, Eddie Campos, president of Northwest Ohio Realtors, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jaden. I'd love to have you on my show sometime. Thank you. I'd be more than happy to. And that's this week's Community Focus. I'm Jaden Jefferson. Have a great rest of your week.